we don't listen. We take time to pray, but we don't take time to listen. I've been so guilty of that this week. And so he's been getting me up at 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the morning. I'll just get my stuff and go to the couch. I said, Tony, this morning, I'm, it was 3.15. I said, I'm going just to pray. Do you have anything you want me to pray about? And I mean, and I just prayed till I think like 6 o'clock. And, and it's not saying, look what I've done. But it's just, I prayed for so much, but I t didn't take the time to listen. So, I mean, I just sat where it was quiet, no TV on. And he just started talking to me about this. And I asked him to take that he's already done, but it's a problem with me and discipline with food. And he, he made it clear, you know what? You're gonna you're gonna keep doing this until you um, determine in your heart and your mind that you don't need the sugar in your body. That you know you're just gonna keep doing this. How forty years they went around the mountain. How long are you gonna do this? So I told Tony I'm cleaning out the refrigerator, and it, it's nothing. It's it's nothing in there that would that would tempt me to, I bought almond sugar to make pancakes. I don't need a pancake. I don't care what kind of flour it is. And he's made it clear. So y'all, if, if he's making it clear to us about anything, finances, relationships, whatever, if he tells you this week to go to that person that you've held a grudge for for so long, to go make it right, go make it right. Life's short. And, and so just take time. If you take time to pray, take time to listen. Yeah. Amen. Amen.
praise God that He put people in our path to help that help us. Praise God, provide home that is where He didn't have to walk. Um, and then we had planned for this past Friday that we were going to pay eighty dollars to get the park after we had paid all of our bills. Praise God. Robbie went to get a part for his vehicle, and he bought it for me. Oh. And my car now doesn't shake. I'm still kind of scared to drive it long distances, but praise God that God does put people in our lives yes. that helps us when they don't have to. Amen.
the daily basis. Mm -hmm. And uh, the times you meet, uh, the times of blue, you seem to be a good Christian. And you can say, oh, I got me another brother, or I got me another sister, I don't know about. And they'll share, this, they'll say some, some old something, and it, it just blesses your heart. kind of helps you get through the day. And I just, I thank God for, you know, I, th I thank God, I give God praise. I'm out walking every morning, almost two and a half miles. And I thank Amen. Him that I'm still able to do this. Amen. I thank Him for that. I was going to be 72 years old, and I thank Him that I still can go out and do this. And, and while I'm walking and singing, walking and singing, yeah, <laughs> and that, 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 that lets me know that I'm not out of breath. You know, I'm not overdoing it kind of sort of. And uh, I just, again, I praise him. Amen. I praise him that I'm still able to do this. So um, y'all just always pray for me and Dave. And got a lot of lost loved ones that need to know that they need Jesus in their life. Yes. And, uh, you know, I know I know that uh, people have gotten saved on their deathbeds, and, and I believe in it. But you miss out on so many blessings that the Lord could be have to bless you with through the years by not accepting it. And I wish I would have done it a whole lot sooner, but everything is in his time and his plan. But I love him this morning. I'm thankful he loves me, and I'm thankful he puts up with me, like Dave. <laughs> so y'all pray for Dave. <laughs> I love my church. Amen. Um, not necessarily, I love the building. I love that parking lot out there. I love our fellowship hall, but it's, it's people sitting in here. It's my church. I love my church family, and, and I, I know that when I say pray for me or I got a prayer request, I feel like in my heart that they're really taking it to God, and I appreciate that. I just don't think a lot of churches do that no more, uh, but I thank God to be a part of one that does. Y'all always help me and Dave when you pray. Amen. Who's next? Alright. I don't think this is going to go quite the way I had planned it. Nothing ever does. Is it? We like it to go God's way. Eh? Amen. Amen. Uh, I'm going to read some verses from Daniel. Uh, and then I'm going to talk to you for just a few minutes about some things here. Uh, and we may not hold you long this morning. Uh, but there's just some things I want you to understand. Uh, Daniel chapter 1, verse 1. In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem and besieged it. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim king of Judah into the hand with part of the vessels of the house of God which he carried into the land of Shinar to the house of his God and he brought the vessels into the treasure house of his God and the king spake unto Asphanaz the master of his eunuchs that he should bring certain of the children of Israel and of the king's seed and of the princes children in whom was no blemish but well favored and skillful in all wisdom, and cunning in knowledge, and understanding science, and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace, and whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. And the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat, and of the wine which he drank, so nourishing them three years, that at the end thereof they might stand before the king. Now among these were of the children of Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, unto whom the prince of the eunuchs gave names. For he gave unto Daniel the name of Belteshazzar, to Hananiah of Shadrach, to Mishael of Meshach, and to Azariah of Abednego. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with a portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Now God had brought Daniel into favor and tender love with the prince of the eunuchs. 
And the prince of the eunuchs said unto Daniel, I fear my lord the king, who hath appointed your meat and your drink. For why should he see your faces worse liking than the children which are of your sword? Then shall he make me endanger my head to the king. Then said Daniel to Melzar, whom the prince of the eunuchs has set over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, Prove thy servants. I beseech thee ten days, and let them give us pulse to eat and water to drink. Then let your countenances be looked upon before thee, and the countenance of the children that ate of the portion of the king's meat, and as thou seest, deal with thy servants. So he consented to them in this matter, and proved them ten days. And at the end of ten days, their countenances appeared fairer and fatter in flesh than all the children which did eat the portion of the king's meat. Thus Belzar took away the portion of their meat and the wine that they should drink, and gave them pulse. As for these four children, God gave them knowledge and skill and all learning and wisdom, and Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. Amen? Amen. Now, I just want to talk to you about what's going on here for a few minutes. The Bible says uh, uh, that uh, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, has traveled over 500 miles to Jerusalem. Uh, uh, he has besieged Jerusalem. He has taken it captive. Uh, uh, he has taken the Hebrew children in uh, and moved them all back to Babylon. He has pulled in... Uh, his prince of the eunuchs, and he said, I want you to go in among the, uh, the Hebrew children. And he said, I want you to find uh, uh, me some children in our young people uh, that we can begin to teach our ways to, uh, uh, some that are smart. Listen, uh, young people, uh, he said they had understanding of science, amen. Are y'all good in science, amen? They're looking for good folks that's good with science, amen. He said they're looking for some that are good in science and they had understanding and abilities of, uh, to be able to work in the palace uh, and to work with the king, amen? Uh, uh, and uh, they began to search out and find these. He said, when you get them, bring them in and we're going to teach them our language. Uh, we're going to teach them to do our things, our ways, amen? Uh, listen, uh, uh, that's the way the world works today, amen? Uh, uh, they're trying to teach our young people their ways. Uh, uh, they're trying to teach them uh, uh, the ways of the world rather than the ways of God. Uh, uh, they're trying to draw them out. And not just young people, amen. Uh, uh, they're trying to get young adults. They're trying to draw as many as they can. Uh, uh, listen to me. I need you to understand something this morning. Uh, uh, Satan is the prince of the air, amen. Uh, uh, the Bible said in another place, he's God of this world, amen. Uh, uh, we need to understand Satan is in charge of this world right now. Uh, he's running rampant, amen. Uh, he's doing everything he can uh, uh, to teach people the wrong way, uh, uh, to draw people out. Uh, oh, well, what do you mean? Uh, well, it's real simple, folks. Uh, uh, and listen, I don't like preaching politics, amen. Uh, uh, but the Bible said if a man does not work, he should not eat. Uh, and we've got people out there today that will not go to work, amen. Uh, uh, we've got people that want to stay home. And I'm not talking about young people. Uh, I'm talking about folks in their 30s and 40s uh, that want to sit at home all day long and let the government uh, send them a check and they don't want to work, amen. Uh, uh, we've got companies out there uh, that are going under because they can't get enough people of, of the work of, of the world is saying uh, we're going to give you a handout uh, you don't have to work well, let's stop what God said uh, uh, the Bible said in Genesis uh, uh, God told Adam uh, by the sweat of your brow you're going to work uh, if you're going to eat amen uh, he had to work uh, he had to tend the garden uh, he had to plow uh, he had to plant uh, he had to grow it uh, and he had to reap it uh, if he wanted to eat feed his family up uh, he had to learn to do these things. Uh, and then God tells us in the New Testament, uh, if a man does not work, he should not eat. Uh, it also says, uh, if a man does not provide for his family, uh, he's worse than a heathen uh, and an infidel. Amen. Uh, uh, let me tell you something. Uh, God has set down uh, his 
and tribulation, uh, uh, Satan uh, uh, will pull up his seat of authority uh, and begin to rule the world as the Antichrist. Uh, and for the first three and a half years uh, of the tribulation, uh, he'll rule from Babylon. How uh, uh, you need to understand Babylon. Uh, uh, has a place uh, in history uh, and in prophecy. Uh, it's a place of Satan. Uh, it's a place uh, uh, where God tries to draw his children up uh, and begin uh, to flood them uh, with the things of the world. Amen. Uh, and they were, uh, uh, listen, drawn uh, uh, to Babylon. Uh, and now the king said, now let's teach them uh, what we want them to know. Uh, not what God will have for them, uh, but what we want them to know. Uh, uh, the world uh, is trying to draw
called Daniel. When a king needs something, he says, send for Daniel. Get Daniel. You know why? Because when you're a man and a child of God, listen to me, the people know who you are. Amen. They don't know there's a difference about you, amen. Yes. And they never referred to him from Belteshazzar. It's always Daniel. Wow. Amen. Said that prince of that unit come in there and change their names and said, this is what we're going to give y'all to eat. We're going to teach y'all and we're going to show y'all how you're supposed to act. But listen to what happens here in verse 8. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with a portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuchs uh, that he might not defile himself. Uh, he purposed in his heart. Amen. He got it down in his heart, no matter what happens, uh, I'm going to serve God. Uh, no matter what happens, uh, I'm not going to learn what they're trying to teach me. I'm not going to eat what they're trying to give me. I will not give in to the things of the world. I am a child of God. I belong to God. And I have purposed inside. I'm not going to do the things of the world and give in to the flesh. Bless him, Lord. He told the prince of the units, he said, Listen, don't you bring that stuff to us. We're not going to eat it. Me and old Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, we're not going to eat that stuff. And the prince of the union said, wait a minute. If y'all don't eat this, and y'all begin to look sickly, then the king's going to come in here and he's going to cut my head off. Because everybody else is eating his meat, drinking his wine, and they're looking... They're looking fleshly. I mean, their pink cheeks all looking good. They look like they're gaining weight and they're doing fine. And here y'all sitting there getting skinny. You're losing weight. You're looking sickly. And he's going to take it out on me. <laughs> Daniel said, I tell you what. He said, let us eat what we're going to eat. You feed the rest of them just 10 days. And you come back and look at us. And we'll go from there. Just prove God. Prove what God will do. Try the Spirit. See whether they're God. God said in Malachi, prove me and see if I won't open a window of heaven and pull you out of blessing you can't contain. He said, prove me, amen. I'm here to tell you God is large and in charge and on the throne. You need something today. You prove God. God has stood every test of time. He's never failed a test. If you can get better than A+, God gets it, amen. He's passed every test that's ever been put before him. Prove God today. I challenge you. I don't care what's going on in your life. Prove God today, amen. amen. Prove him. Because he's never failed me. And if he can provide and take care of me, I'm telling you today, he can provide and take care of anybody. That's right. Yes. If he can do it for me, he can do it for anybody. Yes. He can save me, he can save anybody. Amen. He can keep me, he can keep anybody. Amen. Because I know how I am. I know I can be a handful. Amen. Amen. And if God can keep me, he can keep anybody. Amen. Bless him, Lord. Prove God. He said, bring us pulse, Steve. And I looked up that word one time. I said, what is pulse? Don't sound too good. <laughs> pulse is a biblical word that means peas. Lots of different kinds of peas. Field peas and English peas. Whatever kind of peas they are. I would hope black-eyed peas because I love black-eyed peas. Amen. <laughs> so I, I don't know. But, but pulse is... <laughs> It's not something that you would think you're going to eat a lot of it and get fat off of. Yeah. And they brought pulse in for them to eat. For ten days, that's what they had. Pulse and water. And the Bible said after the ten days, when he come back in and looked, all of the rest of them that was eating the king's meat looked sickly. And Daniel and Meshach and Abednego looked fat, plump, and looked like they were doing great. Amen. What do you say? I'm saying if you'll purpose in your heart to, uh, to do what God wants you to do, uh, uh, God will take care of you. Uh, God will fatten you up. Uh, uh, God will make you uh, uh, where you're able to serve Him. Amen. Amen. But we have to purpose in our hearts to 
be obedient to him, to listen to him, to not give in. We have to purpose within ourselves. Amen. Have we purposed in our hearts, amen, to be obedient to the Lord? Folks, this is a choice you and I have to make. Daniel had to make this. And listen to me. Daniel, Meshach, Shadrach, Abednego, these were boys that were 16, 17, 18, 19 year old. These were young boys. Young boys. They weren't old and, and, and mature like we are, Brother Tom. That's right. Amen. <laughs> don't ask nobody else in the congregation. They don't think we're mature. <laughs> Okay? <laughs> Just me, this is me and you. We mature. Right. Amen. It's okay if we like Dave and Busters and play video games. We yeah, mature. Amen. It's okay. We're talking about young people because let me, let me tell you something. A few years ago, there was a thing came out from the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church said, if you will give me a child from birth to the age of five, and let us teach that child. That child will grow up always knowing the Catholic ways. They will never depart from it. It will be in them. And they'll always lean on it and fall on it. Amen. Because they realize between the birth and five is when a child is learning the most. Amen. Because they learn to walk. They learn to talk. They learn to communicate with their parents. Uh, uh, they're learning all of these different things. And I mean, they're catching on. Some of them catching on pretty quick uh, about how to do things. Uh, and in between those ages, they learn to lie. Uh, because, they, they, listen, by the time a kid's four years old, and you go in there and say, did you break that? No, ma'am, I didn't do it. Amen. They learn to tell a lie. Amen. They learn to do all kind of things. And the Catholic Church realized those are the most formative years of a child. Uh, and if they could get them between those first five years, uh, they could teach them anything, uh, and they would always stick with it. Amen. Uh, we need to understand, amen, uh, as these children are growing, and at this time, uh, uh, it's important we give them the right foundation. Uh, we teach them godly things uh, that they can lean on. Amen. Uh, uh, because if you teach a child when he's young, when he's old, uh, he ain't going to depart from it. Amen. Uh, uh, we've got to bring them up uh, in the admonition of the Lord. Uh, uh, we've got to teach them what's right. Uh, now we're looking up uh, at four teenagers uh, that the world's trying to turn away from God. Uh, and Daniel said, wait a minute. My God's better than this. Prove Him. Let us just see pulse. Let us just drink the water. And we'll go from there. And God fattened them up. And God took care of them. And it wasn't because of what they ate. It was because of the relationship in their heart with Him. Because Daniel purposed in his heart not to mess with the things of the world. If you and I will purpose in our heart to turn of the world, grab a hold of God. God will bless us. God will provide for us. And God will take care of us. But it begins in our hearts. Amen. 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 Yeah. Bless him, Lord. That's our problem. We can't keep our heart here with God. We keep looking at this stuff. Can you imagine what it was like? He come in there, here's you a plate full of pulse. Go on and eat. And get you a drink of water to go with it. And he come over here. Here's you a T-bone. <laughs> you gonna sit and look, you gonna eat, look, that's your plate, that's his plate. Now that's it. Yeah. What do you think? What do you think? You don't think the devil wasn't doing that to Daniel? Yeah. When Daniel looked at this. And he looked at that. You don't think the devil don't paint a picture like that when you're trying to stand firm for God and the devil's painting gorgeous pictures out there in the world trying to draw you away. Here's a teenage boy, amen, who probably ain't 
You ever been out to eat with somebody? And they're sitting at the table with you and they're eating a steak and you're eating a salad. You ever been there? It's kind of tough sometimes. I go home and I eat a salad and ain't nobody around, just me. And I put my lettuce in there and some bacon bits on it, sprinkle some cheese on it, put my dressing on it, sit down and eat it. And that's the best tasting salad in the whole wide world. And slice of cucumber here and there. Hey, it don't get no better. But when I'm sitting in a place somewhere eating a salad just like that, one of them that ain't getting no better, and somebody gets a steak, yeah. that salad don't taste as good. Right. It just don't taste as The lettuce is a little wilted. The dressing's a little sour. It just ain't right, is it? But Daniel had purposed in his heart, no matter what was served to anybody else, Daniel said, I'm going to bless, and I believe he blessed it, what God has given me, and eat this. And I believe in his heart, he was wholeheartedly thankful to have it. Amen. I believe he was. Because it's his relationship with God that brought him favor with the king later on. It was Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego's relationship with God that in a couple of chapters from here is going to keep them from burning up in the fire. Yep. It's purposing in your heart. I'm not going to have a part of the world. It's purposing in your heart. I'm going to have God and God alone. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. That's why we have to be careful. Because like I said, the devil's got a counterfeit. He'll make everything look good. He'll, he'll put that steak out there. And maybe you don't like steak, amen. He may put a big old piece of chocolate cake over there. Oh. And, and when I'm sitting there eating black eyed peas and looking at chocolate cake, I don't know. I don't know. I don't do much with, I ain't had a Dr. Pepper in a long time. I don't do much with chocolate anymore. And I praise God I've lost 12 pounds. I know y'all can't tell Lord. it. Praise the Lord. But I'm, I'm, I'm trying to eat fat-free stuff, and low-fat stuff. It's killing me. <laughs> I, listen to me. Killing me. you have to purpose in your heart this is what I need to do. This is what's best. And Daniel purposed in his heart, I will not give in to Babylon, to Nebuchadnezzar, to none of these things. I will not give in to the worldly standards. I'm not going to do it. He said, I have a relationship with my God and that's more important than anything else. And after them boys was thrown in the fire, now, I don't know where Daniel was. Because sometimes I wonder, why wasn't Daniel thrown in the fire? He's around there somewhere. But he, must, he might have been somewhere else in Babylon and didn't get caught. Because I'm going to tell you, I'm sure he didn't bow either. <laughs> but then we get, we, get, we get another chapter over. And the old king has had a dream about a big statue. And came none of his counselors and soothsayers and <laughs> And all them astrologers tell him anything about it. But he called Daniel. And Daniel come in and Daniel prayed about it. And Daniel told him the vision of the dream. The interpretation of what God showed him. You know why? Because Daniel purposed in his heart, I'm not doing the worldly stuff. I'm doing the godly stuff. And because of that, God moved him up with favor with the king. And when the king needed something, he called Daniel. Call Daniel. Daniel will talk to his God and his God. This, this is what he said. His God is God. Amen. You and I need to purpose in our hearts. We need to learn that verse 8. Daniel purposed in his heart not to eat the things of the world. We need to purpose in our hearts. We're not, and when I'm not talking about eating cake and stuff like that. I'm talking about the things out there that the devil's trying to feed you on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. Whether it's culture, politics, 
emotional stuff, mental stuff, all, all of these things that the devil's trying to feed us today. We need the purpose in our heart. We're not going to eat that. We're going to eat godly stuff. What is godly stuff? Biblical. That is the bread of life. Amen. That is the water of life. Amen. Well, there's my water, there's my bread, and that's all I need. Amen. Give us this day our daily bread. Daily bread. Yeah. That means reading the Bible daily. How many of y'all do that? Rhetorical. Don't embarrass yourself. Don't throw you. Y'all said some of y'all sitting there thinking. Now he's just getting personal. Yes, I am. <laughs> Bless him, Lord. When Jesus taught them how to pray in Matthew chapter six, he said, "Give us this day our daily bread, daily bread." And then he went on and said, "I am the bread of life." I need my daily dose of Jesus. How do you get a daily dose of Jesus? Sit down and open that book. That book is Jesus. Amen. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. And the Word was God. Jump down to verse 14. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. That's Jesus. Amen. Think about that next time you just throw that Bible over in the corner somewhere. You're throwing Jesus aside. That's Jesus. You need your daily dose of Jesus. Daily dose. Everybody ought to be opening the book and reading the book. Well, I don't understand. I didn't ask you to understand it. He didn't ask you to understand it. He said, just read it. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> read it. Understanding will come. The Holy Spirit will begin to reveal it to you. But he can't reveal nothing to you if you don't read it. Right. Got to read it. You have to have your daily dose of Jesus. Amen. We've got the purpose in our hearts that we're going to serve the Lord. We're going to eat what God has given us, not the things of this world. Amen. Right. So today, we've got to ask ourselves, have I purposed in my heart? Have I got the kind of relationship with the Lord where I'm not looking at the things of the world? This is what God's given me. I'm going to be satisfied with this. Paul said, I've learned in whatsoever state I'm in, be content. I'm going to tell you something. I, I don't think I've learned that lesson yet. Uh, it's just, it's hard to be content. To what I've got, I don't want nothing else. Because I do. Amen? Amen. I want a bigger lawnmower. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Miss Lori cut the grass out here the other day and she pushed all this and pushed all this and pushed all this. And then she came up and she said, I want to buy a zero turn. <laughs> she wants. She is hard. Amen. I agree. I pushed all this. You want something to ride that'll get up and go. Amen. But Paul said, I've learned in whatsoever state I'm in, be content, be content where I'm at right now with what I've got. And if I can learn to say, all right, I'm content right here in this place. God's put me what I've got. I'm content with this. And honestly, have my heart where I'm content with it. Then God will add to it. God's not going to add to it till I learn to be content. Say, okay, God, if I don't ever get anything else, I'm okay. Yep. Once I get to that place that I'm content, then God will add to it. God will give me that. There's a scene uh, in the movie uh, Facing the Giants. And it ain't the death scene and all that stuff. The boy is standing out there among the trees reading songs. And his wife wakes up and he's not there and she walks out there. And he looks at her. And he's done got to this place. He wants to know if she's at. He said, if God never gives us any children, will you still love him? And then it fades out. But I think she must have gotten to that point where she said, I'm content. I want children, but if I never have them, I'm still going to love the Lord. He's my God. She learned to be content. And when she did, if you get to the end of the movie, you find out they had two kids. Yeah. <laughs> be careful. 
get content, you might have a house full. <laughs> Psalm said, blessed is a man whose quiver's full of them. Amen. Yeah. Lots and lots. Amen. <laughs> you get content and God will bless you. The Bible says in Proverbs, the eyes of a man are never satisfied. So it's hard to get to that place where we're content. I'm okay, God, with what I've got. It's okay. I'm content. <coughs> and then God starts to add to it. Then we have to learn once he adds to it, stay content. You and I have to be content. We have to purpose in our heart to be content. We have to purpose in our heart not to partake of the world. We have to purpose in our heart that we want to have a relationship with God and Him alone. We have to purpose in our hearts. Daniel purposed in his heart, and because of that, God blessed him for many, many years. God blessed him with visions. God blessed... If you read the first six chapters of Daniel, deal with Daniel and, and his life and things that happened. The last six chapters of Daniel deal with prophecy that's all in the book of Revelation. God showed Daniel before he showed John. Them last six chapters are all about prophecy and things that are coming. If you study Revelation, you're never going to understand Revelation until you go back and read parts of Daniel. you got to have Daniel. you got to have God blessed Daniel for many years. God blessed Daniel when they throwed him in the lion's den. God blessed Daniel. Why? Because he purposed in his heart. Where is your heart today? Well, I'm saying that's good. But have you purposed in your heart to be content? Have you purposed in your heart to love the Lord? Have you purposed in your heart? Because, folks, that's what we have to do. We have to purpose in our heart. In other words, we've got to get our heart right with the Lord, get in His will where He wants us to be. Say, I'm with you, Lord, because, listen, He believed in you. He believed in you so much he died for you. Now it's time for you to believe in him so much you live for him. you got to believe in him and what he's capable of doing today. Because he's capable of taking care of you, saving you, providing for you, saving your family, giving you whatever you need, blessing after blessing after blessing. He is capable. But you got to believe in him. Where do you stand today? Where are we standing?